Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Wednesday. It is October 11th and it's been raining all morning. It's cool and kind of chilly outside. Matter of fact, they just made crockpot chilly, I think. On the end of uh, Good Morning America, it sounds like a, a good thing to make it a day like Yes, today. it sounds. She said, oh, it's great with the weather. I'm like, yeah, here in San Antonio, too. Absolutely. <laughs> but Mia's in for Justin. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, it definitely has been a damp and gloomy morning commute across the San Antonio area. Looking outside at some of the cameras, you can definitely see uh, some of the residual rain still left out there on the roadways. Let's get you a look at the radar right now. Most of us starting to quiet down. We do have some lingering light rain, a few sprinkles, maybe some drizzle, especially on the south side of Bear County near 1604 Elmendorf Calaveras Lake that stretches up to New Berlin, as well as Lavernia out there in northern Wilson County. And then that continues through portions of Atascosa County and across the far eastern reaches of our area too, near Cuero, Howlettsville. All of this is working eastward and rain chances are going to taper off over the next couple of hours. But even just looking outside, you can see how gloomy it is temperatures on the cooler side right now in the 60s here in San Antonio over in Seguin Bernie as well winds are relatively calm now I think by lunchtime it's possible we start to see some of this cloud cover break up a touch and then even more so by the later portions of the afternoon a forecast high temperature around 80 degrees not too bad but into tomorrow and Friday we are noticeably going to see those temperatures warm highs approaching 90 especially by Friday but that's a of our next cold front that moves in Friday afternoon and evening. Drier air works back in just in time for the weekend. Low humidity, cooler temperatures, and who can forget the annular eclipse happening on Saturday. We'll get you all those details coming up in a few, but first let's head over to RJ. Been a little bit of a busy morning out there on the roads. Uh, yeah, absolutely busy, Mia, and especially with those slick roads out there. We kind of expected that this would be the case, but Texas crews and law enforcement officials have been out and about in the roads taking care of business, so we want to let you know about this crash here northbound 35 at St. Mary Street. So the downtown area, a little bit north of downtown. You can see there's still some flashing lights there from this crash that has been there for quite some time. So just keep caution if you're headed out in this area and taking a look at the maps here. You can see that uh, we do have a pretty good backup here on uh, northbound 35 at St. Mary's again. So it's affecting traffic all the way past North Main Avenue. So this is definitely something that our drivers in the downtown area are going to have to contend with this morning. Take you out to the near northwest side. We have another crash that was just reported by text out there eastbound loop 410 at Cherry Ridge again another very busy area with that 410 I-10 interchange there on the near northwest side also there was some stuff being reported earlier up by Callahan Road but uh, this seems to be like the biggest issue at the moment again if you're heading in eastbound from 410 at Cherry Ridge it's something that you need to keep in mind if you make your way out right now so the other big thing we're following is on the far northwest side so further up uh, I-10 there we have a uh, stalled vehicle there eastbound lanes of I-10 at Loop 1604. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey just walked into the station and uh, she said that it is definitely uh, very, very busy in that area. Of course, there's always some ongoing construction there, right there by Fiesta, Texas and uh, UTSA. So, oh, you know what, before we do that, let's go back real quick. Wanted to show you a little bit of a camera shot from that area there on the far northwest side. Again, we are seeing traffic move through there. It doesn't appear to be causing any sort of significant sort of major delays, but definitely something that drivers out there on the far Northwest side are dealing with. And again, just want to give a quick shout out to TxDOT law enforcement officials. They did a lot of good work this morning, especially on 281, which was a bit of a mess uh, earlier today. So great job by those guys. And you guys all stay safe on the roads today. Mark and Steph. You're here. And thank you, RJ. Here's today. It's nine at nine. The first plane carrying U.S. military supplies landed overnight in Israel as President Biden calls for a decisive and overwhelming response to Hamas. He condemned the Hamas terror attack on Israel as an act of sheer evil. Israel's attack on Gaza continued overnight, striking hundreds of targets. The death toll now growing to more than 2,000 on both sides, including at least 14 Americans. In Washington, all eyes are on the House. Members say there's bipartisan support for sending Israel emergency assistance, but nothing can get voted on without a House speaker. A vote on that could come today. Two men are vying for the job, Representative Jim Jordan and House Majority Leader Steve Scalise, but it's unclear if either candidate has enough support to get elected. 
A strike at the General Motors plant in Canada is over less than a day after it started. The union representing the auto workers said GM quickly gave in to union demands once the strike started. Strike actions are on hold to let the membership vote on the tentative agreement. The strike could resume if the rank and file members do not ratify the deal. Stock traders are becoming more convinced the Federal Reserve may hold the line on interest rates at its next meeting. The Atlanta Fed president is now the latest Fed official to suggest more rate hikes may not be necessary. Stock markets head into trading today after the S&P gained one half of 1%. The Nasdaq closed up 0.6% and the Dow added 0.4%. Leading real estate and banking groups are hoping traders are right and have sent a letter to the chairman of the Federal Reserve warning that any more interest rate hikes could raise the likelihood of a recession. Higher rates have led to surging housing costs amid an already historic shortage of available homes for sale. The American Red Cross says the U.S. blood supply has reached critically low levels. It's now asking high schools and colleges to bring back blood drives to help combat the shortage. Before COVID, about 25% of donations came from school blood drives. Experts say they hope to see a return to pre-pandemic levels this school year. U.S. Postal Service wants to raise prices once again. The proposed new rates include a two-cent increase in the price of a first-class mail forever stamp. Now, prices for special services products would also go up. Those include certified mail, post office box rental fees, money order fees, and the cost to purchase insurance when mailing an item if approved. Now, the new prices would take effect on January 21st. Get ready for a change of plan. You've been a longtime T-Mobile member. The carrier is forcing customers with older unlimited plans to change to current options. Also, their monthly bills will go up. Notices go out next week and the change kicks in next month. Amazon is trying out a new way to get you to shop more. Popping up for some users is a new feed called Buy Again, using a customer's order history to suggest repeat purchases. It's also being tested on the homepage of the Amazon app. And that's today's 9 at 9. Canadian morning headlines. We could see new sports added to the Olympics, including flag football. Plus, the dangers of melatonin for kids after some serious allegations are brought against a Texas teacher. Max Massey joins us live in the studio with our morning headlines. Good morning. Good morning, guys. So we're starting in Washington, D.C. Never a dull moment over there. New fraud charges this morning against the controversial Congressman George Santos, now accused of identity theft and credit card fraud. A 23 count superseding indictment accusing him of stealing identities making charges with donors' credit cards without their knowledge, let alone consent, and lying to election officials. Now, Santos charged with conspiracy to commit offenses against the United States. We talk about wire fraud, making materially false statements to the Federal Election Commission, falsifying records, aggravated identity theft, and even access device fraud. Will you step down? I will not. I have no comment. I was in conference like everyone else without my phone, so I have nothing to talk about. I need to take a look at the whole thing. Did you commit wire fraud, though? It's a pretty basic question. So just last week, his former campaign finance chief was also indicted. Prosecutors say the two made donations to Santos's campaign from family members without their knowledge, claiming the campaign also had $500,000 on hand when they actually only had $8,000. He's due back in court on October 27th. We now turn to the Olympic champion, Mary Lou Retton. Probably know her well. She's now reportedly fighting for her life in a Texas hospital. We're also getting a better grasp of her financial struggles. So this 55-year-old former Olympic champion, she's been in the intensive care unit more than a week now, a rare form of pneumonia, apparently unable to breathe on her own. All of this, according to her daughter, McKenna Kelly, been updating fans on social media. Now, Retton gained worldwide recognition for her performance in the 1984 Olympics. She won five medals, more than any other athlete during those games. The family now asking for donations to help with medical bills, saying that the former Olympian is not insured. Her family had a fundraising goal of $50,000. As of this morning, they've more than doubled that. Well, more people have been turning to this, melatonin for trouble sleeping. But there's a disturbing situation here in Texas, and it's frankly highlighting the dangers that melatonin can pose to children. It's possible for children to overdose on melatonin. More children getting a hold of it. The CDC says pediatric melatonin ingestions, well, skyrocketed more than 500% in the last decade. 
More than 260,000 reports of kids ingesting melatonin. More than 4,000 kids having to be hospitalized. Two even dying. This morning, we now know a mother near Houston says she's afraid to send her five-year-old back to school after his teacher was caught giving the student and others the sleep medicine. The mother requesting she not be named, saying her son is nonverbal in a special education class. She says she noticed something was off with his behavior. He was completely lethargic. He was stumbling to get off the bus. She had asked, like, besides favorite snacks, does he like gummies? So the school district investigating, saying the teacher did give out melatonin, acting on her own and without obtaining parental consent. The teacher did not notify campus administration nor the nurse. Now that teacher was allowed to resign. The school board said firing the teacher would have been a drawn out process, but right now local police are getting involved and they are investigating. All right, now to end on some fun and Mark, Steph, you guys got to start warming up because I think we can make the Olympics. Five new sports being considered for the 2028 Summer Olympic Games. And here's the best part, guys. We don't even have to go that far because they're being played in Los Angeles. The organizing committee proposing flag football, softball, baseball, lacrosse, squash, and cricket to go in the Olympics. So flag football and squash, never part of the Olympic competitions. Cricket appeared in the Olympics only once, 1900. Lacrosse appeared in the Olympics in 1904 in St. Louis and in 1908 in London. Baseball introduced in a medal event in 1992. Yes, that was the Dream Team Olympics in Barcelona and softball added in 1996 in Atlanta. Uh, the International Olympic Committee's executive board reviewing the sports in Mumbai, India on October 16th. So guys, I, I ask you, is there any chance that the United States does not win flag football? I feel like that's almost a given. <laughs> right, you would think. We'd hope we'd have the most experience with that. Yeah, and I saw, uh, so when the news first broke, Tyree Kill, formerly of the Chiefs, now of the Dolphins. Right. He, uh, he tweeted out, he was like, me and the boys, we're gonna get together and bring home the gold. So you never know. That would be never fun. know. Yeah. I just read an article because they're adding break dancing to the Olympics. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that it was it was actually pretty cool so far. And they're qualifying and everything like that. And they said it, just, uh, it may wind up being a, <laughs> a crowd favorite. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Uh, yeah, just especially this leg. Yeah. I know. Thank you, Max. <laughs> Thanks, Good to guys. see you. And 9 10, 67 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Well, the Astros postseason continues and the Rangers advance to the next round of playoffs in the next half hour. Max is going to be back with RJ to break dance. No, just kidding. To talk about both ALD's games from yesterday. But before that, we're continuing to follow the latest in the Middle East and the war in Israel. When we come back, Courtney Friedman speaks with an Israeli and American citizen who was there as the first missiles were launched. The war in Israel began Saturday with a massive attack by the Hamas terrorist organization. Israel's retaliatory airstrikes continue, including into Syria, which officials say has launched rockets into northern Israel. As the death toll rises, the decision to leave the country is difficult, but necessary for many. Our Courtney Freeman spoke to an Israeli and American citizen who was near Tel Aviv when the missiles began to strike all around her. Saturday, 6.30 in the morning, all of a sudden, an alarm, everybody's running. You know, the panic is there, but uh, it's very organized. This woman, who doesn't want to be named for safety, was in Tel Aviv for the Jewish holiday. She captured this video right before helping elderly neighbors to the building's bomb shelter. It's a, it's a very tough, but you, you just have to move. You, you don't have time. You have 30 less than 30 seconds, and you're already hearing the noise, you know, the bombs above you. She was in and out of the bunker for five hours as thousands of rockets pounded Israel and Hamas terrorists invaded, taking lives and hostages. The horror, the horror. You know, I have nephews there right now. Um, I have a lot of friends. She was able to jump on a plane back to the United States where her three kids are, but she left reluctantly. Nobody wanted to. I didn't want to leave. When I was in the airport on a flight, you hardly saw any Israelis. It was mostly Americans. Israeli gets very, very close to each other. Everybody's helping. If it's food, if it's clothes, just amazing. But she feels the love here in America. All the donation and the money that's going just to help. How does that make you feel seeing all of this support? It makes me feel good. You know, it makes me feel that people see what's going on. 130 people are dis they're kidnapped. It's hard. There's children. She said this terror attack is causing suffering for both Israelis and Palestinians. We don't want any innocent 
to die here. Let's let's be honest, from both sides. Every moment she waits for word from her family, praying peace comes soon. That's it. Just just prayer. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Looking out there with live camera. Cold morning for the most part, 67 degrees, and it's kind of been raining on and off in our viewing area, uh, but I, I understand things are going to kind of change again. <laughs> yes, we've got a couple of different changes. The rain that we've seen this morning, lingering sprinkles and drizzle, that's going to taper off by this afternoon. Still high as I was looking at the latest data, may not climb to 80 depending on that cloud cover, but tomorrow and Friday, noticeably warmer, and then here comes our next cold front just ahead of the weekend. So if you loved last weekend, we're going to love this weekend too Good. because we've got more fall weather in the forecast. But first, let's get you a look at some of the rainfall totals again. Yesterday, especially here in San Antonio, we started to see a few more showers, a couple of downpours pop up in the afternoon, and then we had some lingering light rain into the evening. Unfortunately, at the airport, just three hundredths of an inch. That's really all we've been able to gather out there in the rain gauge. Over half of an inch, though, in Pleasanton, as well as Carrizo Springs. Really, the sweet spot, though, has been southern Medina County and far northwestern Frio County. There's a rain gauge out there just southwest of Hondo over an inch and a quarter. So that is great to see in localized spots. 0.31 in Lytle and about 0.05 over at Kelly. So for the month of October, remember we had almost an inch and a half last Thursday with the initial front that came in. We actually are doing pretty well just under an inch and a half so far. That's actually above average for where we should be be this time in the month since January 1st over 15 inches, but we still do have some work to do when it comes to our yearly rainfall total. You can see this is the big picture what we're still looking at right now across South Central Texas. For the most part, any substantial and significant rain is just not falling along and west of the I-35 corridor closer to San Antonio and here in Bear County. Just seeing some weakening light rain work its way closer to the 180 one corridor near Calaveras Lake, Elmendorf, as well as La Soya. That does stretch farther southward down I-35 or I-37, I should say, near Pleasanton and Jordanton. And then we've got a few more light showers across the eastern reaches of the area. That all is moving closer to Houston. Now, something else that we can look at in terms of seeing maybe some lingering mist, especially out near Del Rio, is visibility. Visibility is down. We are starting to see some of those numbers improve here in San Antonio specifically, but even up in New Braunfels, visibility is down to about a mile and a half. So just be careful out there on the roadways throughout the remainder of the morning. It also is pretty damp, but you can see here on your future cast by lunchtime. A lot of that is moving east of the area. We are drying things out and by late afternoon and into the evening, a few peaks of sunshine are expected. Now temperatures today are going to be very dependent on when we start to see some of these breaks in the clouds. 72 now is expected by lunchtime. And again, we've got forecast highs pointed in the upper 70s now around 78 by 4 to 5 o'clock and then gradually falling into the low 70s later on this evening and tonight. 82 in Canyon Lake, 84 in Floresville possible, a little bit warmer for those that do tap into a little bit more sunshine earlier in the afternoon. All right, we mentioned that we are expecting a warming trend before we see this next front move through the area tomorrow. Highs jump into the mid to upper 80s for us here in San Antonio, nearing 90 on Friday. And then we see that next front move in Friday afternoon and evening and temperatures come down into the upper 70s and low 80s into the upcoming weekend. So here's that setup. We start off to more tomorrow morning with some patchy fog, maybe a sprinkle or two, but then into the afternoon we see plenty of sunshine. Here comes that next front on Friday. Unfortunately, not really expecting any rain in our neck of the woods with this boundary, but we will start to see that cooler and drier air work in, especially on Saturday, and that is good for the annular solar eclipse that is happening there as well. You can see there are those dew points that will be dropping. It will be more comfortable. We are just three days away from the ring of fire taking shape in the San Antonio sky. Again, portions of the hill country will be able to have a great view there as well. We'll talk a little bit more.
more about it coming up in the next half hour too. Until then, we'll monitor when the clouds break up this afternoon. It's warm Thursday and Friday, and then we see another push to some of that fall air work in just in time for the weekend. That'll be payoff on Saturday after hitting. I think so. 90. It'll definitely be worth it. So thank you, Mia. Of course. 921, 67 degrees. I can imagine being the target of an investigation at work and then fired for not immediately handing over some private medical information to your company. Well, that's what a former CPS Energy employee told Case and Investigates happened to him. And he gave us the audio to prove it. We're going to have that story in just about three minutes. 924, former CPS Energy spokesman says he was targeted at work and later fired. He claims it was for failing to turn over private medical information to the company's security staff. To be blatantly honest, I feel like CPS Energy is very comfortable in their way of terminating people, wrongfully terminating people. Ruben Bentoncourt tells KSAT investigates he was simply following the instructions of human resources and has provided the audio to prove it. Dylan Collier has a story. In late April of last year, less than two weeks after having an emergency appendectomy, bilingual communications specialist Ruben Betancourt showed up at CPS Energy headquarters for the utility's monthly board meeting. Still feeling a little, little off, a little bad. After entering the building, Betancourt said he temporarily misplaced his security badge, although he later found it the small misstep would have a big impact on his brief tenure with the company. The next day, Betancourt said he was summoned back to headquarters by CPS's security operations team. They began interrogating me, asking me um, questions of like, what was going on that day? Um, you know, just different things that we thought you were suspicious. CPS officials contend they uncovered security video footage of Betancourt attempting to drive into its garage through the exit gate. The narrative you thought they were trying to build is that you showed up to work under the influence. Right, correct. Next, he says, came a request from security for Betancourt to hand over a list of all of his prescribed medications. Betancourt, who has a diagnosed mental illness, believed the demand went too far. Here is a portion of one of Betancourt's calls with security. Okay, so just to be clear and, and you know, I gave you till, give me until five o'clock today to uh, provide that information. So are you just re refusing to provide it or declining? Betancourt instead contacted the company's human resources department and again recorded the conversation. You're, you're going to work with me going forward. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Perfect. I, I am, I'm going to, yeah, um, work with me. You don't provide them any information, especially you're asking for medical documentation and everything that on a medical side, um, you know, with our HIPAA laws. Betancourt says he eventually complied with the request and turned over a list of his prescribed meds to HR and the company's manager of occupational health. He also filed a complaint against the security team and was quickly placed on administrative leave. I basically felt alone um, in this corporation. I just felt like I was belittled, I was targeted. Um, nobody was there to vouch for me. Betancourt returned to work last summer after completing fitness for duty paperwork, but said he walked into a cold, hostile environment. That July, just days before completing his probationary work period, Betancourt was fired for not safeguarding his badge and for failing to cooperate with the subsequent investigation. Betancourt says he lost his medical insurance and his car and temporarily experienced homelessness. I was compliant um, to the fullest with HR and occupational health. And it's interesting because that should have been the right procedure from the get-go. They shouldn't have been trying to pry this uh, medical information um, from me. For Case that Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. Benton Court filed a federal disability discrimination claim against CPS Energy. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission closed it in August without making a determination on whether the company violated his rights. The EEOC instead issued a right to sue letter. Today, Betancourt has not filed suit against CPS and no legal determination has been made in connection to his claim that the company wrongfully terminated him. He said half of the attorneys he's reached out to have cited a conflict of interest in taking a case against the utility company. CPS officials declined an interview request from KSET stating it does not comment on personnel issues. 
928, 67 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including highlights from the Astros and Rangers games. From yesterday, Max and RJ, we're going to have a look at what's next for both teams as the postseason continues. Plus, how a local family is keeping their Halloween tradition going even after losing their son recently. Katrina Weber shares their story after the break. A couple behind a popular Halloween haunt in Holotus is struggling with real life tragedy. They lost their only son in a motorcycle crash just a few weeks ago. Katrina Weber shows us how, even through their own pain, they plan to keep bringing happiness to others. This is how you enter. You go in. Rick Romano has it all planned out. Every sound. Every sight. And this area here, this is the witch's area. And every surprise. Jack in a box will pop open. He jumps out. One thing he did not expect was doing all of this without his son by his side. 24-year-old Nicholas Romano, or as his family called him, Nick, was killed in a motorcycle crash last month. Nick was one of the kindest people you would ever meet. He was so kind. He was the life of the party. He's such a positive person. He was always wanting to help people. For years, this Holotus family has been helping to thrill local children, turning the outside of their home on trailing Fern Street into a haunting Halloween experience. This was our annual contribution that we love to do. They'd spend all year planning. Then Nick would use his skills in construction science management to bring it all together. No! <laughs> this was his favorite time of year. He loved doing this. He loved the creation. We were supposed to start setting up the day after he died. For an instant, they considered canceling this year, but an outpouring of love from others, some of them strangers, changed their minds. Even on this rainy day, friends showed up with helping hands, touching hearts. It's a community that's helping us deal with this tragedy, and we wanted to continue. Still, while the tradition will go on, the changes will be hard to ignore. For years, this has been known as the failed experiment cemetery, but this year, Romano says he's changing the name in honor of his son. It's going to mount up on these trees here, so it'll say the Nick Romano Halloween adventure. It's just one way the family plans to keep his memory alive, while also giving others a chance to make some memories of their own. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now, Nick Romano's parents also plan to set up a scholarship in his name at UTSA, his alma mater. They'll open their haunted house to the public beginning this Saturday. And for more details, you can check out the story on our website at kset.com. It's been a dreary Wednesday so far, but Mia says there's a chance we'll see some sun later. Yep, we should start to see some of the cloud cover break up a touch, mainly by the later portions of this Wednesday afternoon and then into the evening as well. And again, temperatures, just how high they're able to climb later today, that's going to depend on how quickly we can find a few peaks of sunshine. First, though, I do want to get you a look at the pollen count. Not much change compared to what we saw yesterday. Molds are still in the moderate category. We have ragweed and fall elm press present, but the good news is they are both low. Check out our temperatures right now because of those dreary conditions and the overcast skies here in San Antonio. We're still in the mid to upper 60s. Somewhat cool out there. 66 in Hondo, 65 in Bandera. Again, right now we're going to shoot for forecast highs in the upper 70s by about 4 to 5 o'clock. Starting to see a few peaks of sunshine out there tomorrow. Some patchy fog, a morning sprinkle, not completely out of the question, but we will see more sun by the afternoon. Highs climb into the mid to upper 80s because of that nearing 90 on Friday. Then we see that next front move in Friday afternoon and evening. That is going to make for very nice, comfortable weather for any annular eclipse viewing plans or watch parties that you have. Skies do look to start to clear by that time as well. We'll talk all about it and get you more details on that front coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Will it be a Texas face-off? The Houston Astros just one win away from advancing to the ALCS. All the Texas Rangers are waiting to see who they'll play next. RJ Max are back with a recap of last night's MLB playoff action and a look That's ahead. Beautiful.
to what's next. <laughs> Are you lefty? <laughs> I am lefty, yes. Are you really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. I had no yeah, idea. Look at that. Lucky lefty. Engage on me, yeah. You know, okay. I didn't play baseball. If only you were Altuve, yeah, you'd be like this no. tall. They really you know have what? a tough Some time. compared me to Jose Altuve. <laughs> okay. Case that's Altuve. I love it. Speaking of which, they crushed it last night. Yes. Let's go right here. Okay, Astros uh, uh, on the road here. The series tied 1-1, taking care of business. Uh, they have been solid throughout the entire sort of postseason here. Of course, they won the AL West. Mm -hmm. They were behind for most of the season, behind the Rangers, but now taking care of business, take a 2-1 series lead. We saw Jordan Oliver. There, there's my guy. Yeah, there he is. He had to step on a, a stool for a second there. I want to mention, though, uh, Alex Bregman shouts to him. He Drew a Jewish star in his hat. Uh -huh. And they led from start to finish. I mean, 4-0 yeah. in the first inning and really never let up. They want to go back. Yes. And as, as a Phillies fan, it... I'm rooting that for him. Right? That's why you took a shot at yeah, Altuve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like Altuve. I, he seems like a nice you're dude. A Phillies fan, you remember yeah, yeah. last year? That was yeah, that was, yeah, that was pain for you. Um, <laughs> Hopefully we can go back though. Hopefully we can go back though, RJ. That's it. Um, here's the deal. Okay, Astros. This would be their seventh consecutive ALCS. Got to take care of business today against the Minnesota Twins. And look, I'm just saying this right now. If Twins, mm -hmm. let's just get out of the way because we want this Lone Star series. Okay. You're looking at me like you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't. I look. You I'm. Texas I'm rooting Arizona. for the Astros to get back to the World Series <laughs> so that the Phillies can face them again. Okay, yeah. good. Good yeah. stuff there. Yeah. Oh, wow. You're calling your shot there. Thank you for oh, calling Braves the Phillies. shot. Your I'm complete just saying. transparency, Matt. Yeah, we, we aim for transparency <laughs> yes. here on KSAT, especially in the, the 9 a.m. Phillies taking on Atlanta, right? Yeah. Oh, ESPN jinxed them two days oh. ago. There was like a no hitter underway. We were up 4 0. <laughs> we lost 5 4. Mm. Mm, so, Tough. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So that's the NLCS. But yep. also want to mention the uh, Texas Rangers. Now, this is pretty incredible stuff here. Game there at Globe Life Field and, uh, yeah, up in Arlington. And the Rangers now 5 0 in the postseason. Ridiculous. Remember, they basically backed their way in. They blew the division title at the end, the last game of the uh, season. But now they beat the Rays 2 0, took care of business there. And then they took care of the Orioles. I mean, this were was, wins. yeah, this was a ridiculous game. I mean, it, it was not even. I Actually, you know what? I'll say it. In both games, Texas <laughs> yeah. teams really cleaned up. I mean, 7-1. Okay. Uh, it was over. It yeah, was just this hitting, was a, fielding. It was beautiful. Yeah, this was brutal. I don't know how much the Orioles had left in them. And I will say this. You know who is the happiest person right now in the North Texas area that the Rangers are taking care of business? Dak Prescott, because oh, he does not have to be goodness. at the top of any of those <laughs> sports headlines because the Rangers have been dominating. Again, I just want to see this happen, Max. I want to see Texas yeah. take on the Astros. They've been back and forth all season. Those two fan bases have been sort of talking a little bit of trash back okay. and forth. So this would be a lot of fun if the Rangers can play the Astros. But as we see right there, to be determined. To be determined. All right, yeah. who are you going to go for? Oh, uh, between the two teams? Yeah. Wow. You know what? Uh, that's a great question. I'm going to have to think about that one. I will wow. say, I think, the, I think South Texans genuinely kind of gravitate towards the Astros yeah. a little bit more. But I did spend some time uh, working in Dallas for a little bit. And the Rangers are a lot of fun. When they're winning and they're really good, they're a lot of fun. Plus, mm. they also have San Antonio's very own Josh Young on that team. That's um, fair. MacArthur right. alum. He's uh, one of the top players right now for the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Eight hits so far in the postseason. I just want to clarify. You say your case sets Altuve. And you don't even root for Altuve. <laughs> What's going on here? Hey, I, you know what? I like the Astros. I do like the Astros. I'm not, you know, I know you're still feeling. No, I'm, for right now, I like the oh, Astros. You like them right Until we right see them in the series. <laughs> yeah. I like the Astros right now. Yeah. Okay. Mark, um, Steph, who are you guys going for? Well, I'm an O's fan. Okay. So my Orioles, yeah, I'm sorry. did not oh. show up, that's yeah. for sure. In yeah, this definitely series. not. Definitely. But congratulations to Texas. They played a great series. I'm rooting for the Strohs. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Yes. I, I am, too. I am, my too. Guy, my, brother, my brother from another mother, Jose Altuve, I guess. <laughs> All right, guys, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. 940, 67 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and let's look out there with Zoo Cam. I think I heard Alex say that we're, yeah, we're looking at our friends, the Flamingos. And, oh, did you see some rain there in the shot briefly? I didn't. Oh, well, I didn't. Well, they're enjoying the water regardless. It's, it's nice we have these other camera shots now, but it's good to check in on our Flamingo yeah, friends. Yeah, make, make sure that they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great day to go to the zoo. We'll be right back. 944. I kind of like the rain. It's nice. Mm -hmm. It's a change of pace. It and is. we definitely need the rain. Now we need to move it out of here to get ready for the eclipse. By the way, True. I mentioned on the early show, I placed uh, an order for uh, eclipse glasses through HEB. Yeah. yeah. Out of stock. 
at my oh. H-E-B. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even find it on the menu, so maybe yeah. they're out of stock at mine as well. Okay, oh, okay, our producer okay. said she got some at Home Depot, which is on our list yes, on our website. Yes, it is. We have, by the way, on KSAT.com, we have an Eclipse page mm -hmm. specifically. There is so much content on there where you can get glasses, how to view, timings of when the eclipse is going to start, all of it. So definitely go check that out. It's very helpful information as we near the final stretch of days leading up to the annular eclipse. By the way, here's a little factoid for you. A lot of people have been asking, where does the term annular even come from? So so annulus is actually Latin for ring. And of course, this eclipse is where we see the moon move in front of the sun. And it's just a little bit smaller than the sun. So we see the ring of fire take shape. That's going to start here in San Antonio around 1152 AM. Speaking of which, here is the latest path and timeline for when the peak is expected to get going. Junction, Rock Springs, Carta Valley, northwest of San Antonio on Saturday at about 1150 in the morning. Closer to San Antonio, Hondo, Uvalde, Batesville, even Divine right there along I-35 by about 1153. Floresville, Pleasanton, 1153. 55, and that's going to continue working its way farther off to the southeast as we get closer to the noon hour. Now, remember, we have that front that's going to be moving in on Friday. That is good because it does look to knock out the humidity. We'll see drier air move in for this weekend, and skies should start to clear, especially by Saturday morning. At the worst, maybe a few passing high clouds, especially southwest of San Antonio. Regardless, it is something that we are going to monitor for you definitely check back in here over the next couple of days. But until then, we've got plenty of cloud cover out there right now. You can see, though, here past 30 minutes on the radar, a lot of that substantial rain is starting to weaken and fizzle out just a little bit. It is still gloomy and dreary. 70 by 11 a.m. is expected in terms of your temperatures, 76 by 2 p.m. And just depending on how quickly we can see some peaks of sunshine return, that's ultimately going to determine just how warm those high temperatures are able to climb. Right Right now we've got forecast highs pointed in the upper 70s here in San Antonio. Then those thermometers will fall through the 70s after the sun goes down. Tomorrow, noticeably warmer. Highs in the upper 80s, even near 90 on Friday. Then we see that next front move in Friday afternoon and into the evening. Dew points are going to quickly drop by Friday night. That means we will see fantastic weather this weekend. Low humidity, cooler temperatures as well. Highs in the upper 70s and near 80 by Saturday and into Sunday. So let's talk that setup. You can see the bulk of the rain is now shifting well east of our area. There's a little bit more rain across portions of the Pacific Northwest near Seattle, stretching down to Portland. That is associated with the area of low pressure that's going to bring that front into our region on Friday. Check out temperatures out that way in the upper 40s and low 50s. Now, in terms of high temperatures, it's not going to get that cold for us here, but it's possible by Sunday morning we could see some of those low temperatures fall back into the upper 50s, kind of like what we saw this past weekend. So that's good news as well. Here's your Thursday afternoon. That low pressure moves into the central plains. It brings that front into North Texas near the Metroplex, stretching over to San Angelo by early Friday morning. Then that approaches our region late Friday afternoon into the evening. No rain really expected with this particular front. Maybe a stray shower across portions of the Winter Garden closer to the Rio Grande. But, but for us here in San Antonio, it's looking to be a dry frontal passage and windy afterwards. In fact, for the annular eclipse happening Saturday morning, do expect it to be pretty breezy out there as well. Some wind gusts generally upwards of 25 to maybe even 30 miles per hour possible as that cooler and drier air works back in. So until then, the rain tapering off throughout the remainder of the day today, a few peaks of sunshine. Yes, it will be warm. Thursday and Friday, but as soon as we see that next front move in, fall ushers back in as we head into next week, too. Me, me I Good. want to mention something real quick before I forget. Uh, we were just talking about baseball and yeah. the playoffs, and uh, the Astros twin scheme has moved from 1 p.m. to 6.07 p.m. There you go. On uh, Fox Sports 1. It's a big difference. Good update. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right, I just didn't want to forget. Hey, we'll hope you join us this weekend for the Lightning Night event. The event raises money for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's research to find a cure for blood cancers. The evening will be lit with lanterns that pay tribute to patients, survivors, and those who have died from cancer. Light the Night will be on Saturday beginning at 6 p.m. That's at Hemisphere, and our Lee Waldman will be the MC of the event. 
If you scan that QR code on your screen right now, it will take you to the website where you can join and sign up to be part of Team KSET. Now, registration is free and open to everyone. If you're not able to go but still want to help out, you can also make a donation by scanning the QR code with your phone. Our goal is to raise $5,000, and we need your help to get there. Time now is 949 and 67 degrees for now. If you missed Dancing with the Stars last night, we have a recap for you coming up after the break. Dancing with the Stars celebrated the music of Motown last night, but before the show was over, another couple was eliminated. ABC's George Pinocchio has our post-show report from the ballroom. Tyson and Jenna. Model and actor Tyson Bedford became the third celebrity eliminated from season 32 of Dancing with the Stars. Scoring all fives from the judges, including guest judge Michael Strahan, that last place finish from them was enough to take him down when viewer votes were factored in. I was happy I made it this far, you know, but I really, really wanted to win for her, and I knew um, that I was way better than what happened out here tonight. My foot just got caught up, and that was it. Jason Mraz and his partner, Daniela Karagach, were tied for first place with the judges, with Daniela's husband, Pasha Pashkov, and his celebrity, Ariana Maddox. We have, you know, like an outside eye for each other, you know, to give each other critiques, so that's helpful. Even though we're in different teams, stri we're both striving for the same thing, striving for excellence, and I love watching them dance. They're, they're world champs, so to be in this program with the Pashkovs is, is phenomenal. Eleven couples remain, and the camaraderie among them is only growing despite the competition. I feel that this is a very friendly bunch that we have here and everybody really is rooting for everybody. Yeah, and I so. love when she says bunch. The stars all have goals here and improvement is on everyone's list. This experience is short and I am 100% focused and I'm going to uh, do my best until I'm told to go home. It takes a lot for me to get it right and so I just love that you know my hard work is paying off and they're seeing that and acknowledging it. Next week is Disney night and Sochi Gomez doesn't want to reveal anything. Uh, no! We do know she'll dance a pasa doble, but I don't know what this move is. Sochi promises she'll be back on her feet next week when Dancing with the Stars celebrates 100 years of Disney. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Next up, there's George Pinocchio. Yeah, I saw him in yeah. the ballroom. Yeah. What is Greg Brady thinking? <laughs> I He's don't lost know. His marbles. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, hi. Um, okay, going back outside, looks like we still have a little bit of mist uh, hindering visibility, especially on the south side of Bear County and then even up into New Braunfels as well. So still be careful if you are fixing to hit the roadways in the next couple of hours. The roadways are definitely damp in spots thanks to this morning's rain, even though it is starting to taper off. We're still in the 60s. We'll monitor how warm those temperatures are able to climb this afternoon, hot into Friday. Then our next front brings fall weather for this weekend. All right, we've been talking about the upcoming solar eclipse this weekend. We've also been talking about how important important is to protect your eyes while viewing it. That's right. And right now on KSET.com, we have a list of places where you can get your protective eyewear. And our Sarah Spivey also had a fun and easy project that you can do with the kiddos to make a viewfinder for the big event. And we've got team coverage coming up on yes, Saturday, don't we? it is going to be very exciting. We're kind of going to be all over the place, so definitely tune in for that. All right. And we saw you on the video right now with the glasses. With the glasses. Ready? Get your glasses. Ready to go. Thanks for joining us.